Danny, we had another roundtable discussion today with Mike Sando and John Clayton, and inevitably we get to the Seahawks and their offense, and in light of Victor Cruz signing his new deal with the New York Giants, I'm just left going into training camp wondering how the Seahawks, how Daryl Bevel is going to spread the football around. Fantasy football style here. Who leads his team in receptions at the end of the year? I think it's Percy Harvin. And I think that probably he has 65, 75, I think somewhere in, in, in that range. It would surprise me if he got to 80 catches. Would you draft him in fantasy football? Is he going to have enough touches to have an impact like a Victor Cruz has who gets 14 million large? They signed him to a big deal. And they obviously gave away a couple valuable draft picks as well. Is, is Percy going to be able, in the confines of this system, to put up fantasy football-esque numbers? I think so with touchdowns. But that's kind of the, the, what you just asked is the hugest question. Is it possible someone else is going to finish with more yards? Yeah, it is. I don't think so. I think they're going to use Percy in a lot of different ways. I think you're going to have him in some special teams roles with kickoff returns. But measurement is going to be number of times he gets to the end zone more so than total aggregate number of receptions. Well, in some ways, wasn't that Golden Tate a year ago as well? I mean, from a total reception standpoint to what he did with his touchdown production, you know, the touchdowns outweighed the receptions. I think for, I think for all the Seahawks receivers, is safe to say that that's how you're going to have to gauge them, not necessarily on the number of receptions. They're not going to be a pass-first system, so their ability to make the game-changing touchdown play, is that the way we're going to define them? It is. Last year, you had Sidney Rice led the team, 50 catches. Golden Tate was number two with 45. Each of them had seven scoring opportunities. Now you're going to add Percy Harvin to that group. It'll be interesting to see how it all sorts itself out. I do think that there is going to be an emphasis on getting Percy the ball. When you mentioned Victor Cruz's deal, you have to know Seattle saw Harvin as a whole different caliber receiver. Not just in what they gave up to get him, but just the skill set that they saw him as one of the 10 best players in this league, 10 best offensive players who's not a quarterback. Let's take the quarterbacks off the table. They see him as that kind of talent, a group that includes guys like Larry Fitzgerald, like mm -hmm. Calvin Johnson, like, like Adrian Peterson. They see him as that kind of elite talent. Now, the one thing they do have on their side, both Percy and Sidney Rice have been in an offense with Adrian Peterson, which was centered around the run. It's not like this is going to be foreign to them, but that distribution is going to be a huge question. Is this the deepest receiving core the Seahawks have had since? It's deeper than they had ever at any point with Daryl Jackson, Bobby Ingram, and that group. I mean, I think we're going back at that point. We're outside sort of my frame of reference to, to the 80s. Might be the deepest ever.